Hey everyone, my name is Donald, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the Gravity Form Styler by the Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor plugin. So right here, you see that we have a form, and this is all generated by Gravity Forms. So we have our form here, and we're able to customize this look so that we can go ahead and match the branding of the site that we're building, um, just to make it look a little bit more clean and flow. You can go ahead and grab Gravity Forms if you don't already have it from gravityforms.com. And from there, you can go ahead and choose the package you like and go ahead and download it from there. Now, I've already gone ahead and pre-built a form for us. So it includes our name, phone number, email, some checkboxes for services needed. And then we have a your message option. So they can go ahead and type in a little bit more information about what they're contacting us for. So for the name field, we have it being required down here. And then we have, as well as the appearance, we have our placeholders for first and last name. Now we've gone ahead and done the same thing with the phone and the email, made those both required and added the placeholders there. And then we have our checkboxes for the services needed. For this one, we've gone ahead and added a description that you can see right here. And then of course, for our text box, we have, um, we have that here as well. So let's go ahead and get into editing and see what this looks like. So right now when you add a gravity form to your Elementor page builder, you get something that looks a little bit something like this. And this is just the standard short code that you enter in um, in order to get this look. So we're gonna go ahead and style this with the um, ultimate add-ons element. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And we're going to type in gravity and then this uh, gravity form styler widget is going to pop up and we're going to click and drag that right into the builder. So from there, it's going to ask us to select a form. So let's go ahead and select the contact us form that we built. And you can see already it's looking better. We don't have drop shadows. The borders aren't there. Um, everything just looks a little bit more clean. So this already is starting to look great without us having to do much work. The enable Ajax form submission, uh, I usually turn this on just because it doesn't refresh the page when submitting. The keyboard tab key support, this is great for accessibility um, for your users if you need them to have, to be able to use it without a mouse or something of that nature. And then of course you can set your tab index value here. And of course they do provide a help article if you just click on this red link and it'll let you know a little bit more about that. So the title and description, you can pull it from Gravity Form. So it's the title that you name your form. You can enter your own. So you can have this. This is the contact form right here. And then, of course, you can have a description right below it if you want to do that. Then, of course, there's an option for none, which is typically what I like to do. I usually don't have a title. Um, usually the title something like this over here, the write us or something of that nature. So we've gone ahead and we've gone through the general. So let's go ahead and style our form fields. So the form fields are everything that you see. The name, the the actual white box, the input box, the check boxes, everything that you see here. So we have a couple different options for field style. We have box and underline. Right now we have it as box so we can see the white background. If we choose underline, it's going to add a border on the bottom of the of the input. Now, in order to make this look completely uh, like an underline, we'll go down to the field background color right here, and we're going to go ahead and drag this transparency all the way down. This goes ahead and lets us do a just a single underline for our boxes, and it looks it looks great. This is my go-to form. Um, styling for most websites. So we have a field size, which is extra small through extra large, and you can go ahead and play with those just to see how you get the, the sizing for your website. You may have a more material site where you want to have an extra large input, or you can have a smaller site where it's more detail oriented or more corporate, and you want to go ahead and choose a smaller field size. You have the field padding. So if you go ahead and look right here on the first name, you have this little space right here on all of them. 
if you go ahead and set your padding down to zero, it goes ahead and it gets rid of all the padding around that, around that um, input. You can of course adjust them individually so that you can have different paddings, top, bottom, left, and right. And of course you can adjust that so you can have different paddings there. So we have something that looks just like this. Now we have a bunch of different options such as uh, background colors, label colors, input texts, um, description colors. So let's go ahead through all of these. We touched on the background color a little bit, which is the actual background of the field itself. So let's go ahead and change that. So we have something that looks a little bit similar to this. Let's go ahead and grab this color right here. And we're going to go ahead and make our backgrounds the same color just to keep consistent. So we have something like this. And then we want to go ahead and change the placeholder color because it's a little hard to read. So we can either choose white or we can actually make it completely transparent and not show at all. We have those two options as well. Now you can see that we have our placeholder here and it's a little bit bumped up to the left hand side. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment and add 10 pixel padding to the left side. It's great if you want to do an underline and not have a background to have no padding on the left side, but if you want to have the box, you should have the padding on the left hand side just to make it look more uniform. The label color. So the label is the name, the phone, the email, services needed. All of those are labels. So let's go ahead and we can change those to different darknesses, different colors completely, whatever you want to do to match your uh, style for the site. And of course, you can always just make them transparent and have them not show at all, depending on your needs. So let's go ahead and make this just a dark black right there. So let's go ahead and navigate over. So we've gone ahead and changed our label color, our input color, and now let's change our field description color. So this right here is the field description. So check all that apply right here. So we want to go ahead and make this just as dark as we did with the labels. So we go ahead and put that. The required asterisk color. So right now it's that dark red that we all know and love. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit more unique. We can make it that really bright red. We can make it completely black. Uh, we can make this pink. Whatever matches your branding, go ahead and just style it however you want. Let's go ahead and make this black just to make it uniform. So we can go ahead and add a border to all of our, our, all of our fields as well. So we have the border, we have multiple options here, and then we have our border width. So let's go ahead and make this uh, five pixels. And then for the border color, let's make this black. So we have something that looks like this. We can make this smaller, um, thinner, whatever you want it to make to make it match the style of your site. So you can see that we've changed the uh, input here, and then we also have a border around our checkboxes. So that's another way that we can go ahead and do that. And then of course we can round our corners if we wanted to add rounded corners to all of our fields. So we have rounded corners here, and then it actually made these squares turn into circles. So always be careful what you want to do with that. Okay, so we have a section for radio and checkbox. There's a way we can override the current style that we've just set. So we can actually turn this on, and it changes it back to our default of what we initially had. So we can go ahead and make the size bigger for the checkbox. The background color for the checkbox, different colors, if we wanted to go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and add that same color that we wanted but we don't want that border. We just want to leave that right there. We could change the color of the box of when it's selected, and I'll show you guys this on the front end. So if I click black, you won't see anything right now, but like I said, I'll show you on the front end what this is gonna look like. And then we have our label color here. So for example, earlier when I took the label color down from the form fields and made it transparent, it also made this checkbox transparent. You can go ahead and make this label color 
specifically separate of that rest of the input there. And that's great if you want to do uh, uh, transparent labels. Let's go ahead and put this back. We have different options for borders. So if we want there to be a border around here, we can increase this. We can add a green border to this and increase the border width here. And then we can always, of course, make them rounded. Something of that nature. So this is what we talked about. This is all of the form fields that we've gone ahead and we've gone ahead and styled all of these. Let's go ahead and style the submit button. So we have a few different options for the button, which is awesome. We have left, center, right, and completely justified. So in some cases, you may want your submit button to go full across the entire width of the form. If you wanted to do that, you would just hit the submit button. I mean, the justified button. If you want something left aligned, you can do that, and then you have your other options. You have options here to do pre-built sizes. So if you want your button extra large, if you want it small, you have all of those options. And then of course you have your padding. So if we go ahead and turn this off, you can see that it takes the padding of our submit button down. Now I like to have my padding a little bit wider than this for buttons, just because it's a little awkward of a button size. So I usually do something around 15, 70, 15, 70. It just makes it look a little bit more unique, uniform. Let's actually dial this down to about five and five, and I'll bump it up to 10. Just so we have a little bit of a wider button, but I don't want it completely justified, but I just wanted it left aligned. Now we have options for text color for the normal. So right now our text color is white. We can make this black. And then of course we have options for the background. We can make this background an image. So we can do something similar here. Let's go ahead and add an image. So we've got this. And then we have all of our options to go ahead and style this however you want it to be. So you can add a button. So if you have a gradient, you can add a gradient here. Or if you have your image, you can add your image here. And of course you have the option to go ahead and then put a color for your background as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and we also have the same options for hover. So for hover, we have the text color. So let's go ahead and change this to black. So when we hover, it's black. And then we have the border hover color. So when we hover, there will be a border around it. And then we have the background type. So we can make the background different colors when we hover over top of the button. Okay. So we have one last section and it's called the success and error message. So right now, uh, you won't be able to see it here until we uh, accidentally submit it without doing a required field. Um, so let's go ahead and show you what this looks like real quick. So let's go ahead and submit. And you can see right here we have this error message right there. So we can go ahead and style this however we want. So we have the message color, the field validation, which is of course this right here, the field validation. So we have it as a black, uh, a red tint background with a red wording. So you can see right here we have the red wording here and we can change this to black. We can change the topography to make it bigger or smaller. And then we have more advanced settings so we can do the field background color and the highlight border color, something of those of those. Now we also have different form error validation messages. So we have the message color, which you can see is this light gray right here, which matches here. And then we have the error message background, which is transparent for now, and the border color. So we can also change that to black. We have the border size, rounded corners, and of course padding around the, the message, which you can see right here, the padding top and bottom and left and right. And of course, we have the validation for when things do go right and they fill out all of their form fields correctly. 
we have the color that you can change, and then of course all of the topography settings that you can change as well. We of course have the style section, which allows us to do a few things. We can add some spacing between the two fields. We can add bottom spacing to the label. We can add top spacing to the inputs. And then we can add bottom spacing to the inputs. Now let's go ahead and show a few demos of this. So between the two fields, we're going to add spacing between each of these fields completely. And if you see that, we're going to go ahead and do this. But none of these are getting spaced. That's important to realize which one you're actually going to change. Then we have label bottom spacing, which is going to add spacing between the label and the top of the input. Input top spacing, so the input right here. Now this is going to be kind of similar to what we just did with the label bottom spacing, but instead we're adding the spacing to the top of the input. And then we have the bottom spacing for the input as well. So you can see that we're moving it down here instead of moving it in between. So there's a bunch of different options for spacing your, your fields apart. Then of course we have the topography settings. So we have the label topography. So we can go ahead and increase the label size. Change the default fonts. And we have all of our other options here. And then our text topography. So right here, if we increase the text, that's gonna be our placeholder. So we can go ahead and increase and decrease that as needed. And then the description topography. We have this as the description, which we have one right here. And if we go ahead and increase the size, we can go ahead and see that that is getting bigger and smaller. And then the button topo topography, we can go ahead and increase and decrease that as needed. Those are all of the different options to edit your Gravity Forms with this amazing plugin. If you want to style it, go ahead and use this. It's awesome. Um, I'm going to be adding this to all of our sites so that we can go ahead and get great looking Gravity Forms. If you haven't done so yet, go ahead and subscribe. Click the subscribe button below and click the bell to turn on notifications so that you know every time we upload a great video for you to learn something. Uh, we will see you guys at the next one. Have a great day.